Hey, what up, America? This your boy, Boo Sean Glover, with a Better Black America TV on YouTube. And you have just tuned into a Better Black America Weekly. So welcome. Now, here in the L.A. area a few weeks ago, we celebrated the life of Dr. Martin Luther King at the Kingdom Day Parade and the festival that was at Lumber Park. So if you missed it, here are some of the highlights of the Kingdom Day Parade and the festival. I guess we got strikers waving to the community, waving to the crowd. Okay, look like Charles Drew University. The Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science. The Channel 4 News in the building. I guess they waving. And here we go, standing right in front of me is the Public Work Street Services. Looks like the bros got jobs. The Public Works, right here at the Kingdom Day Parade. Channel 5 News. Okay, and that's David right there, number 43. And there's the Chargers helmet and logo. Follow behind, got the Black Professionals Alliance. The Farmers Insurance Black Professional Alliance in the parade. You see anything that you could get together where you're gonna make some type of resources from an independent perspective, that's something to be celebrated. So showing them much love. The Farmers Insurance Black Associates. And I'll be doing interviews at La Mert Park because it looks like that's where it's going to end and they're going to have a festival there. Good Caribbean dancing. Let's go. We're gonna show some love to Rachel Harper. Rachel Harper with TMZ. You're looking beautiful as ever. Let's get a good shot of her. Where you at, Miss Rachel? Turn this way, Miss Rachel. Can we? Can you turn this way? There you go. There you go. TMZ in the building. Rachel Harper looked like she's in in the car with her child, with her daughter. And this is what it's all about. And while I'm sitting here, I see this sign that says, uh, King Estates. Ain't nothing about no estates over here. <laughs> just LA doing this gentrification thing, because maybe one day after gentrification does come into effect, this will be King Estates. Let's get back to the parade. Yeah, we are here at the uh, made our way down to the festival and they having church service down here so we're gonna get a little footage of the church service yeah it's going on the parade route ends at Lamert Park in Crenshaw or at Vernon and Crenshaw. And in Lamert Park, they're having the festival right now. And this is all the people that's uh, attending the festival. Got food trucks. I'll be showing some footage of that as well. Now, 
Now, one thing that I learned at the Kingdom Day Parade, that they are uh, trying to get paperwork and trying to change the name of Lamert Park to Africatown. And if you don't believe me, here's a brother explaining the nuts and bolts of the future name of Lamert Park as Africatown. I am co-founder of the Africatown Coalition, and we are right now in what we are calling Africatown, uh, basically Lamert Park slash Africatown. Lamert, as you may or may not know, was a racist. Uh, when this uh, community here was put together back in the 1920s, black people couldn't even come into this community. You know what I'm saying? We couldn't even uh, clean the floors in this community, you know? So today, when we talk about Lamert Park, anytime Lamert Park is mentioned, it wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for black people. Look around right now. Look around right now, okay? Black people put this on the map, period, okay? For the last 40, 50 years, the culture that has been created here, that has grew up here, that has given this place the flavor is black people. So uh, what we've decided, the community, was uh, to rename this here Africatown. There's a petition that is going around in the city right now in the community uh, to rename this African town because that is what the black people here deserve. I am once again Kevin Warden Price, African Town Coalition, and uh, soon Lamert Park will be changed to Africa Town because black people deserve an Africa Town. You have Koreatown, Chinatown, Armenia Town. We're gonna have us an Africa Town right here at Vernon and Crenshaw. Black Power. Now, I personally had a great time out there at the uh, Lamert Park Festival and the parade itself. And I had a thought that came to my head. Did Dr. Martin Luther King's dream become a reality? And if he was alive today, what would he say? So here are a few attendees that was willing to answer that question on camera. Did Dr. Martin Luther King's dream become a reality? Kalingo my single. K-A-T-L-E-G-O. Yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. dream was a nightmare. Martin Luther King Jr. said himself by his own mouth that he integrated black people to a burdened house. That's his own mouth. And before he became radical, his last two years before he passed away, he said we coming for the check of Washington. So even Martin Luther King Jr. realized that he integrated black people to a burdened house. And if you go fast forward to 2019 now, what has integration done for black people? Nothing. We still deal with mass homelessness, mass incarceration, Last mass jobs, we losing our communities because they want just for our communities. So into Martin Luther King Jr. dream is a nightmare, and we must get back to separation. Okay, now the Dr. King dream right. become a reality. I feel that Dr. King dream haven't come a reality yet because, as my shirt say, the struggle is not over. We still have to struggle and persevere, and it seems like with today's president and what's going on, we, we're moving backward quickly. Very quick. So what do you think we need to do to get to, to we'll go ahead and bring it home so we can have that, close that chapter, embrace in America? I think we need to band together. Black folks, brown folks, yellow folks need to band so together. Colored folks, just colored folks. Colored folks. Yeah. We need to band together like the white nationalists. Yes. And run them out of town. Okay, now, that running out of town, would it be okay if we just establish ourselves as a subsidiary, as a black republic, and socially economic, organized and get to that next level just like them without being combative because you know this is the most powerful government in the world. Right you are. Right. So we don't want to die. We learned that one before. Yes. So we want social and economic justice, but closing that chapter on racism, we get to write that chapter to end the book on racism as well as the new chapter in social and economic empowerment for all people of color. Yes. But what I think we need to do, we need to band together. Yeah, unity. Because what I found, I'm from Georgia. Okay. I'm from the Far East. And I came to the Far West. And black folks in the same shape. Yeah got the same struggle. Yeah. So we got to band together and stop saying it's happening in the South and in the East because it's happening worldwide. Yes. Once we find out and believe that, right. then we can band together okay. and make a positive move. Okay, so you basically, you down with one God, one race, and that's the human race. You down with that? I'm down with that. Okay. Well, it was unanimous out there that uh, did Dr. King's dream become a reality because I talked to 
so many people that I can't even, you know, remember how many people that I talked to. And it was just a few that was willing to go on camera, but it's just, the census is out. Okay, Dr. King's dream, pretty much, you know, we ended Jim Crow, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson signed the 64 Equal Pay Acts and Civil Rights Acts and that nature, and we desegregated the South. But it's unanimous, and just use your mind for a second the state of black America, because black men drove the, uh, the train of civil rights. But think about 50 plus years later, the state of black America and what's going on in the world today. Now, we're in the year 2019, 2019, and we still don't massively produce goods and services. Um, we, uh, from a social and economic perspective, we don't, um, there's no equality there from a social and economic perspective, you know, but things will change and they're going to change pretty fast because the atmosphere is changing. And I've seen so many people um, like Meek Mill, um, Jay-Z, as well as Sean Puffy Combs, you know, people with resources that are now starting to talk about the social and economic condition of black America. Now, we're living in these last days. I mean, it, it, the world is going to end when it's going to end, but we are closer to the ending more so than the front because you could just look at the climate. But from a biblical perspective, it does say the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And with that being said, where is black America today? And I say black America because this African-American um, ethnicity pool that they put us in, you know, the first step that we need to do is basically push back on the African-American ethnicity because we're black men. And just by saying black men, black women as a black race and represent the race, that connects us to every melanated person on this planet. And that's fact. Because when you see a Jamaican or a Haitian or a black Cuban or a black Mexican, you know, everybody's saying, oh, I'm Mexican, I'm Cuban, I'm Puerto Rican. No, we're black people. Because when you talk about race, race is what it's all about. You got the Caucasoids, which is the Caucasian whites. You got the Mongolians, and everybody had that barbecue. That covers all the Asians. And then you have your Negroid, blacks. Negro, you know, the black man. When Dr. Martin Luther King was doing his thing, he classified us as the American Negro. But for some strange reason, you know, that black was too powerful because if you think back and look at the music in the mid 60s and early 70s, we was black and we was proud, but now this African American thing. But we're gonna have to push back on that. So since I have the heart to ask these men or ask these people or these parade goers at the uh, Martin, Luther, Martin Luther King's event, um, did his dream become a reality? So I have to answer that question myself. And it's my personal opinion and I'm sure, you know, at least one or two people share how I truly feel. The answer is clearly a no. Yeah, we did des desegregate the South. Yeah, we did, you know, um, be, a, we're able to go to the same schools and, you know, you have to look at the climate and what's going on with the world today. But if you just look back and see when those civil rights acts were signed, who benefited the most? And look at the climate. You got your feminist groups, you got your LBGTQ community, you got your immigrants, but where does the black people fit in this pool? See, black people don't fit in this pool. Okay, but your African American is right there with them because the one thing that you can do to uh, dismantle a race is, is make the race think or believe that they're an ethnicity. And if you live in America, you know without a shadow of a doubt that they're doing an ethnic cleansing on the black race, more importantly, black men. Okay, because you got men twerking on Jack in the Box commercials. I mean, where they do that at in America? Okay, and then they have this thing where they talk about toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. Well, we would just call it an alpha male. So if our masculinity offends people, it's time for us to man up and be the strong men that God created us to be. The leaders, not the followers, the head and not the tail. So from did Dr. King's dream become a reality? Where's, if, if this was a ball game, if this was baseball, I like to use metaphors. If this was a baseball game, we're standing right on second base, stagnant. 
not looking to steal third, not looking to advance, but just be comfortable at second base because we've been sold the illusion of our freedoms and our liberties. But like I said, God always shows up and show out. I'm a spiritual man, don't have a religious bone in my body, but as long as you believe that there is a creator or somebody's bigger than you and you're motivated to put out positive energy and treat people how you want to be treated, you're cool with me regardless of what religion you believe in because I don't have a religious bone in my body because there's one creator, one God, one race, and that's the human race. So with Dr. King's dream, we're on second base. We got to get to third. We got to bring this thing home. So third base is the economics. We got to secure the bag. A lot of you youngsters like to say it, especially you women. It's time to get the bag. Okay, so we got to get to third base. And then home is the social. Okay, social and economics, meaning we have to change the face and the disposition of how they they're painting our picture and our history because this is our history. You know, we're trailblazers, okay? We're gonna be a part of the black reconstruction era because the curse is over. And now, when I say the curse is over, it's biblical, okay? If you read the book of um, Acts of the, Apostle, uh, Acts of the Apostles, um, I cry like a baby. Yeah, I'm 6'3", 240. Yeah, I cry like a baby when I saw that because it stated, you know, the fact that the children of Abraham will dwell, will be stolen from their land and dwell in a foreign land where they will be casted as slaves for 400 years. And it say approximately. And it say almost. It said for 400 years. And then when I saw that, I'm like, wait a minute. This is crazy. Because those of you who've been to the African American Museum or you know history, the first African, the transatlantic Africans, came to this nation, arguably with the Dutch as in Dutch service, weren't even slaves, but they came over and was documented in the year 1619, August 20th to be exact. So if you count back, August 20th, the year 1619, so this year, August 20th of 1619 would be. Yeah, my, I'm good at math, so I'm just doing this so you can just think about it. <laughs> it will be exactly 400 years and the curse is over. So we don't have to ask anymore. We just do. We don't have to, um, you know, try to figure out, you know, what, what can society or what some political party needs to do. We don't need none of that. We have ourselves because everyone has special gifts and special talents, even if it's just communicating and fellowshipping with your brothers and your sisters. OK. And like I said, don't be afraid of the word black because black is totally inclusive. I'm a black man. OK. I'm not black in color, but we're the darker shades of the human beings, just like a white person. A Caucasian is not white, you know, but they're the lighter shade. OK. And it has to be inclusive to every race. So black, Latin, Asian, Caucasian, kinsman. And the K stands for kinsman, which is, you know, blood related. So we're all human like i said one god one race so with that being said we are entering into the reconstruction era okay the black renaissance area era so it's now to start with the black wall streets it's time to get the money and like i said our entertainers they're they're coming around they're communicating because i saw something with puffy uh sean puffy combs and he was breaking it down that we got the athletes we got the entertainment you know now it's time to get the banks and now it's time to socially and eco economically advance in this nation because they don't want us to you know wake up but at the end of the day it's on us it's not on nobody else it's not we can't rely on someone to do something for us i mean if 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 you had five children and you had to adopt one and i'm sure the one that you had to adopt you would treat them the same but if you only have five things to give that third that fifth that sixth person will not be included in that. So we need to just own our own disposition and man up and be the leaders of our community, like a subset, like a, like a subsidiary. You know, we can't, we're not gonna go and attack America and try to break, break America down, which what they did to the Black Panthers when they basically stated that the Black Panthers was going to, you know, overthrow the United States government when the United States government is the most powerful government on the planet. So that will be, suicidal you know but by being an american and being uh the our ancestors being here as black indigenous natives 
as well as the transatlantic slave. Okay, we're in the Constitution on two different occasions. So why are we as a race, you know, not even notable or not even recognized? Because when Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, he brought in Margaret Sanger and the feminist movements. He brought in, brought in who, uh, Cesar Chavez and the immigrants and somehow, you know, put things into play like mass incarceration, you got AIDS, you got heroin, you got the drugs, you got the Korean War, you got even just hood life, you know, and them, and you know, gangs and everything else, crack, the whole nine. So in 2019, we're still here, and it's time for us to show up and show out, not be offensive or agitators to anyone or make them uncomfortable, but just to stay in our own lane, because we thought the silver medal went to the Red Indian, okay? We thought the silver medal in the race game went to the Red Indian, but the Red Indian actually became sovereign and lost everything and just signed their death certificate. So pretty much they've been declassified to get the bronze. But the feminist movement, the Democratic Party, the the LBG, you know the LBGTQ community, you know they're trying to take what's ours, and they're trying to use us to do it. You know, play to our emotions with the politics and things of that nature. But we got to start being honest with ourselves and not fall for the okie doke and not just be a basket of deplorables, what they think we are. So any candidate that comes up, you know, for the 2020 election, we have to vet them because the late great Dr. Martin Luther King said, it's, we, you know, there has to become a time where we judge people not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And just because you melanated, you don't get a pass either because your character is under display. So we gotta bring this thing home. And to commemorate Dr. King, you know, we have to do this for our forefathers and you know, for the American slave and the black indigenous who history has just been erased. This is our opportunity to write in the final chapter in race in America and pick up our silver medal as runner ups in the race games in America and live as a subsidiary. You know how you got universal, you know, we'll be Dev Jam or Def Row. We don't have to be the big conglomerate because they are already established. So it's time for us to not only try to fight the establishment, but to establish ourselves. So it's time to produce, manufacture, distribute, be creators and innovators because this is on us. So we're gonna go ahead and start writing the final closing chapter on race. And how we depict it is how it's going to be in history. And then we're going to start the reconstruction era, just like after the Civil War, you know, the, the former, the free, newly free slave actually pretty much by being criminalized went back into slavery and was a uh, built and did the reconstruction of the South. So taking a page out of that handbook, we as men and women of, of, of color and more importantly, black men, we're gonna to have to start the reconstruction of America and somehow have our legacies and our histories preserved so we can do just that. And with that being said, now thank you for tuning in to A Better Black America Weekly. And we're going to come at you each week with different topics. And our next show is going to be uh, commemorating someone in black history, not sure who it's going to be. But we're going to be real creative and we're going to try to throw curveballs about people that we don't know anything about. So with that being said, you have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to A Better Black America Weekly. And it's your boy, Bouchon Glover, signing off.